Welcome to Siete Dieciocho. Today I'm going to show you how I made this miniature replica of an old door in a town called Santa Fe de Antioquia here in Colombia, South America. Let's get to work. First thing I like to do is I like to sketch things out. I like to start with a basic kind of freeform sketch and then I get more intricate measurements and more precise. Next, we have to decide what materials we're gonna use. I know I need wood for the door, so I started choosing out some balsa wood planks that I have, making sure I get the right fit, the right width and texture for the planks on the door. I start to put them together to see how many planks is gonna make the actual width of each door. And then I have to measure out to the correct specifications cut them down make sure you measure twice and cut once and that way I get the plank so I can build my door up once I have the individual boards cut out to the right length I then like to glue them together with some supports on what would be the back of the door For the detailing of the doors, I started working with some coffee stirrer sticks. I would cut them out in this miter box. I use that to make sure I get a precise 45 degree angle. And as I'm cutting out my shapes, I start laying them out on my little template. And that way I can kind of build up the detail layer by layer. With all these separate little detail pieces cut out, now I can start gluing them onto the actual door. I try to use tweezers, but I'm, I'm not that good at it. I kind of just go with my fingers and get my fingers all glued up, but you know, this is what you deal with. For some added detail, I added on a layer of toothpicks. I also cut out in the same miter box, and that way I can add on a second layer of detailing on the door. For the door frame, I chose to go with a chipboard that I measured up and I used the compass to get the half dome, half circle part on the top there and then I cut it out with just a regular X-Acto blade. Then I proceeded to add on some of the details that are on the door frame. I cut those out of the same balsa wood boards I used earlier. It's a, a lot easier to kind of sculpt that shape out of the wood. Probably my most used tool is my rotary tool. I have a Dremel and you'd be surprised how much work you can get out of that just for sanding and carving and drilling and all these different things. I used it to cut the circles out of the little wood details because that way you get a nice perfect circular hole. Uh, and then I just cut the rest of the details out with my X-Acto. I sanded them up nice and smooth and I proceeded to glue them onto the door frame. So now that I have most of the detail done on the frame, I glue the door in and I like to put supports on the back so that it keeps it together as one piece that I can just move around easier that way. Now that I have the door done, I started with the stonework that's on the outside of the door frame. I carved the stone shapes with a X-Acto blade and then I kind of widen them up a little bit with a pencil. Sometimes I use sculpting tools also to just make sure I get those spaces nice and wide. We're going to need that for later. Once I had the stonework carved out, what I do next is I coat it in a layer of this black glue concoction witch's brew I made up. It's basically just wood glue and black paint, but what it does is it coats it nice and protects it from the chemicals that we're going to add later. Some matte varnishes or some spray chemicals will eat away at the foam. So the layer of black glue protects it from that and plus the black primer, the paint is a primer for later on. It adds some deep shadows and textures for when you start layering paint on. Next, what I did is I cut out a piece of the insulation foam that's gonna be the outside part of the door where most of the plaster work detailing is. And I cut out the shape of the door with a hot wire foam cutter. I then went on to sketch what these details are gonna be. Just sketch them right on the foam, where they're gonna go, start to get some of the measurements down, and that way I can start building the outside of the door. Next step is to start putting down some of where the brick is going to be. What I do is the same as the stonework, I score the, the shapes of the bricks out with an X-Acto and then I widen them out with a pencil or a toothpick or a, a sculpting tool to make sure I get spaces for actual brick grout or mortar in between them a little later. And as soon as you start cutting those spaces in, you start widening those spaces in, you'll see that the bricks take shape and texture. So I use a variety of different tools to kind of make those spaces, I widen them up with some sculpting tools. Sometimes you'll even make a mistake, but that's okay, it just adds to it. The next step was to add the walls that are on the sides of this massive door frame. So I cut those out of the same chipboard and I glued those onto the sides there. I put some supports on the back so that they would stand up straight and then went on to add 
add some of the detailing that's on the outside of this door. There's a lot of detail and plaster work that's on these doors and I did a lot of it with the same insulation foam. I would just cut it up into strips and shapes and triangular shapes and with a lot of the same tools that I used before. So a lot of these tools are available on Amazon. I'm going to put some links down in the, des in the description there so you can find them for yourself. Uh, box cutters and hot wire foam cutters and these things are all readily available. This would also be a good time to mention that my channel is new and it's growing and if you like what you see and you're learning something, you're enjoying the video, then please go and hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, it would really help me out. It helps with the YouTube overseers and the algorithms to help my channel grow. I would really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Some of the finer details that I added, I cut out of the chipboard and just glued those on there, some of the little fine shapes. I also needed some round flat stones for some stonework that's at the top of the frame. And I figured that I could pour out some hot glue and actually as it cools down, you get these little glue puddles that form these perfectly round smooth shapes. And I just glued them down there to the top of the frame. I also used some pebbles that I have to fill in some of the spots and just glued all of that in there. So after coating the brickwork in the black glue mixture, I started working on the outside of the frame and what I wanted was I wanted a kind of old plaster cement texture. So I got some joint compound and watered it down and started putting layers upon layers. It gives it a nice authentic texture as well as it fills in all the little cracks and stuff. So it actually works out really well. I painted the bricks in kind of a base red color and the stones in kind of a base gray. And then what I did is I started painting individual bricks and individual stones in different tones of the same color. So a little bit yellower, a little bit browner. This way you get some variety and some nuance in the colors of the different bricks because the bricks are not always gonna be all the same color, right? These variations in color will all get unified later. But once you're done painting, you wanna coat the whole thing in a matte finish, a spray finish that you can spray spray on because you want to protect the colored paint from what we're doing next which is the mortar. What I did is I take some joint compound and I water it down a little bit and then I start smooshing it in to all those cracks and crevices that we work so hard to create. You want the matte finish so that you protect the paint because this water and this humidity would start to actually revive the paint and start moving it around again. You want the paint to stay down and you want the mortar to go down on top of it. And then you take a wet rag and you can just wipe the mortar that's on top of the bricks off and it will leave everything that's inside those cracks so that you get that real authentic mortar look. Next comes my favorite part of any project, which is adding the dirt. The dirt and the grime is what adds the realism and the age to these projects. So you get a black wash, which is basically just some watered down black paint, or you can use browns or other tones, and you start just sloshing all that stuff on, wiping it off, slosh it on and wipe it off, and it gets in all the cracks and crevices, it brings out shadows, and it just makes everything look nice and dirty and old. After we get all that caked in dirt down, then we can proceed to add a little age. It's called dry brushing. I take one of these brushes, use the old beat up chip brush like this, and you get some light colored paint. Some people like to use a white. I like to go a little bit darker and just get a light gray. And then you take it and you get most of the paint off where you really just have what's left of residue on the brush. And you start to just lightly brush it over the surface. What it does is it picks up all the highlights, all the texture, all this angles, anything that's sticking up grabs onto some of that paint and it adds a dusted, worn, old, beat up look to it. And it's basically just a layer of dust on top of everything that gives it the real look of age. This is where I start to add it to the door. The door, you're gonna see the same thing. Wherever those edges are is where it's gonna to start to pick up some of that paint and just make it look old and dusty. Now we're on the final straightaway. You can almost see the end. I start to just glue down all this stuff that's finished. I have this tub full of stuff that I've collected. It's basically a lot of scenery materials, some dry plants, some weeds, some bushes, some roots, things that I pick up off the street when I'm walking my dog. And this is what I use when I need plant life or natural things. I found these roots, I don't know what they are. I had them in there and what I do is I just spray some glue on them and then I begin to sprinkle some flocking. Flock is used to recreate grass or leaves or, or foliage of any kind and a lot of companies make it uh, woodland scenics makes it green stuff world has you can find it online i'll see if i put a link there in the in the description section 
So once I sprinkled some different colors of green on there, I have my vines ready and I start to glue them onto the building. I first started with a thicker kind of trunk there and then I went on to get strand by strand of the vines and start to glue them on there in the different shapes and directions that I kind of felt natural and looked authentic. And that's basically the final detail. Once you have those vines there, you're pretty much done. And that's a wrap. This is it. This is the final product. I hope you like it. I hope you enjoyed watching me go through the process. Maybe you learned something. And like, subscribe, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.